Good evening. With the Ghana Learning Channel's News in Capsule for Wednesday, June 23, 2021, I am Kingsley Bryan. Here's a look at some of the top stories we will be covering this evening. We'll tell you that the World Bank approves 6.7 million US for Guyana. That money is to be used to benefit the education sector. The Attorney General distributes hampers in St. Cuthbert's mission, as government continues outreach to affected regions. And the Health Ministry continues to monitor regions. But not many waterborne diseases cases identified. And persons seeking shelter on the rise. This is according to the CDC, as the flood continues to displace residents. In the region, we'll tell you the track legend Usain Bolt introduces twins. Thunder and St. Leo are the newest additions to the family. And internationally, space flights in a balloon are now on sale. Reservations open for first flight in 2024. And now for the news in detail. In a release from the World Bank on Wednesday, it was noted that Guyana has been approved a total of 6.7 million US dollars grant that seeks to improve learning in nursery schools, increase technology use in primary schools, and improve functionality of the National Education Management Information System. The release added that the grant forms part of its Global Partnership for Education, or GPE. Ozen Savelmley, the World Bank resident representative for Jamaica and Guyana relayed that Guyana's education sector has made progress in the last 15 years. He also stated that while there have been improvements, the learning outcomes remain low, and improving the quality of education at all levels will be the priority for Guyana to develop its human capital. The education project at the nursery level will support teacher training to improve pedagogy, or the method of teaching and delivery of a new curriculum. Training will include foundational skills, as well as student-centered pedagogy, formative assessments, and social-emotional aspects, which are of particular importance during the pandemic. The project will also provide learning materials and deliver parental education. At the primary level, the financing will equip schools with computer tablets to enable them to use technology for foundational skills like mathematics and literacy, as well as smart classrooms to support learning. Finally, the project will finance the further development and rollout of an integrated education management information system at the national level in the nursery, primary, and secondary sectors. Meanwhile, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Moabir Anil Nandlal, Senior Counsel on Tuesday, delivered 360 food and sanitation hampers to flood-affected residents of St. Cusbert Mission along the Suzdike linden Highway. The distribution comes as government continues its support to those communities severely affected by the nationwide flooding. The hampers were prepared by the Deeds and Commercial Registry Authority, an agency under the purview of the Ministry of Legal Affairs. Minister Landlal noted that the unprecedented flooding is a consequence of climate change, noting that Guyana communities in Suriname are also inundated. The AG further told residents that the National Assembly has recently approved a $23 billion supplementary budget. From this sum, $10 billion has been allocated for immediate flood relief to help the people get back to their livelihoods. AG Nandlal was accompanied by the communities Tushao, Mr. Timothy, Andrews, and a small team. Meanwhile, turning our attention to health, Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony says, Health teams have not diagnosed many cases of mosquito-borne diseases in regions 1, 7, 8, or 9, which are often prevalent in those areas during the rainy season. Dr. Anthony said the ministry's anti-malaria campaign, which was launched in early May, has played a critical role in safeguarding communities. He further stated that the health teams are monitoring all regions, especially those affected by recent flooding. In relation to the reported isolated cases of persons developing skin rashes, Minister Anthony said they have been treated and additional medication has been provided in the event of a recurrence. On Friday, Minister Anthony handed over 300 treated bed nets to the Neighborhood Democratic Council for members of the Mibikori community in Blackbush Polder, while bleach and other cleaning supplies have been dispatched to the Upper Mazaruni and other regions to help residents to sanitize their surroundings. Minister Anthony said outreach teams are already in those communities doing everything they can to prevent mosquito and waterborne diseases. 
and Director General of the Civil Defense Commission, Lieutenant Colonel Kester Craig, said there has been an increase in the number of displaced persons occupying the nine shelters across the country. In a report from the Department of Public Information, the Director General noted that as of Monday, 232 flood-affected persons have been dwelling at the shelters. Lieutenant Colonel Craig said the Commission plans to accommodate more persons affected by the prolonged wet season and above normal rainfall. At the shelter in the Hururu Forestry Compound Region 10, 17 persons sought accommodation on Monday after their homes became inundated. Over at the Hururu Daycare Center, two people left while 45 remained. One person left the Mapletown Arowima shelter, leaving 36 persons behind. Some 32 persons are at the Kokwani Primary School, while seven are occupying the secondary school in the village. Some 30 persons are sheltering at the Barama Building in Karawab, Region 2, while 14 are being housed at the Rockstone Primary School. There are also four persons at the Tabatinga Sports Complex. In total, there are 127 women and 105 men at the shelters. The CDC is continuing to prepare food hampers to ensure there is an adequate supply for all persons. Meanwhile, five teams from the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Monitoring Agency, CDEMA, will be fanning out across Ghana tomorrow to conduct a detailed disaster sectoral assessment on the flooding, which will reveal the losses and needs in the various sectors. Meanwhile, Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony, is once again assuring the population that all COVID-19 vaccines in Ghana are being offered to every eligible adult. Dr. Anthony was at the time fielding questions from the media as it relates to those employees of Caribbean Airlines that access the vaccines locally. Minister Anthony said the government has an open policy when it comes to vaccinating persons here against COVID-19. To date, 228,337 persons, or 46.9% of eligible adults in Guyana, have taken their first COVID-19 vaccine while 99,764, or 20.5%, have been fully vaccinated against the disease. Minister Anthony said Ghana still has a long way to go, as 46.9% vaccination is merely average. There are about 100 vaccination sites operating daily countrywide. Minister Anthony noted that there has been a decline in vaccination in some areas, which he said could be due to several factors, including the ongoing floods. The minister advises eligible persons to utilize the services of all vaccination centers. He said the East Le Penitent site at Cemetery Road has been relocated to the Yumanayana in Kingston for convenience and easy access. And turn our attention back to the CDC. The CDC on Tuesday received another massive donation of $15.6 million in cash and supplies from three private businesses to support the National Flood Relief Program. Director General of the CDC, Lieutenant Colonel Kester Craig, collected a check valued $10 million from JHI Incorporated, which will enable the CDC to purchase more necessities for flood affected persons. CDC's Deputy Director General, Major Loring Benins, who also received donations yesterday, said the private sector's support has been commendable. Major Benins received 750 hampers of cleaning and food supplies, valued $5 million from Massey Stores, Guyana. General Manager of that entity, Mr. Robert Singh, said the company takes seriously its corporate social responsibility. Additionally, Farfan and Mendes Limited donated six drums of black disinfectant valued some $600,000 to assist in the cleanup phase when the flood water recedes. The private sector has partnered with the CDC since the beginning of the floods in May and continues to support sorry, the flood relief operations of the Disaster Response Agency. Persons are asked to reach out to the CDC on telephone numbers 226-1027 or 6007500, which is also a WhatsApp number or visit its headquarters to make the necessary contributions. And turn your attention to the world of sports. The Ghana Nationals women indoor hockey team is scheduled to compete in the Indoor Pan Am Cup, IPAC, from June 25 to 27 in Pennsylvania, USA. This will be their return to action 
after the prevailing pandemic placed a damper on sporting activities for almost two years. Ghana will face the host nation, the USA, in their first match on Friday at 11.30 hours. The USA are the defending champions after a victory in last indoor World Cup in Berlin, Germany. After their clash with USA, the Guyanese ladies then face Argentina at 18 hours on the very same day, before Canada and Uruguay the following day. And in news from the region, with three lightning bolt emojis for each of his children, all-time Olympic great sprinter Usain Bolt introduced to the world his twin sons in an Instagram post on Father's Day. Jamaican track and field legend posted a family photo with Bolt sitting next to his partner, Casey Bennett, their daughter, Olympia Lightning, and the newborn twins. Like their sister, the boys have been given equally fitting names, Thunder and Saint Leo. Bolt won eight gold medals at the 2008, 2012, and 2016 Games, and the only sprinter to win the 100 and 200 meter double at three consecutive Olympics. Since his retirement in 2017, Bolt now has a number of business interests, including an electric scooter company, also called Bolt. And that story was extracted and modified from Caribbean News Now. And on the international scene, a Florida company is planning to fly passengers to the edge of space in a high-tech version of a hot air balloon, with a pilot and up to eight travelers riding in a pressurized capsule suspended from an enormous blimp. Human space flight company Space Perspective is now taking reservations on its spaceship Neptune for flights in early 2024, with tickets priced firmly in the once-in-a-lifetime bracket at $125,000 per person. The refundable reservation deposits are tiered, with higher down payments needed for year one flights and decreasing for later bookings. The inaugural test flight took off on June 18 from the Space Coast Spaceport in Titusville, Florida. The six hour and 39 minute flight was without a crew, but cameras on board captured a stunning image of Earth at sunrise. Space Perspective says the test flight is a crucial milestone on its way to testing space stores on leisurely sightseeing jaunts with refreshment bar and social media capabilities to hand. While Space Perspective's first flights will take off from Florida, the company is planning additional launch sites around the world. The six-hour trips will involve a two-hour gentle ascent above 99% of the Earth's atmosphere to 100,000 feet. There'll then be another leisurely for two hours for passengers to enjoy the 360-degree views from the cavern before a spaceship makes its two-hour descent to the ocean, where it will splash down safely. Voyage to shore will be completed by ship. The spaceship was designed in collaboration with UK design studio Priestman Good, and that was extracted and modified from CNN. And that's our news broadcast for Wednesday, June 23, 2021. Please join us for a rebroadcast tomorrow morning. On behalf of myself and technical teams, thanks for watching. Please remember to join us for NGSA Booster programs tomorrow. Also, remember to take all the necessary precautionary methods to fight off COVID-19. We're all in this fight together. Good evening.